Hey guys, Mr. Backward here. This is part one of lesson 2.5. We've got one objective for this video. We're going to be using algebraic properties in logical arguments. There are five different algebraic properties that we're going to be working with. And in order for these properties to work, we're going to need a few real numbers. So we're going to let A, B, and C represent some real numbers. Then our first property that we can deal with is called the addition property. So how the addition property works is if A equals B, remember A and B are representing real numbers, then what we can do is we could add C to each side of that equation. So then it says A plus C equals B plus C. Our next property is the subtraction property, and we're going to start with if A equals B again, then what we could do is we could subtract C from both sides of that equation. So then it would say A minus C equals B minus C. Our next property is the multiplication property. So again, we're going to start with if A equals B, then what we can do is we can multiply by C on both sides of the equation. So A times C equals B times C. Our fourth property is the division property. So if A equals B, then what we can do is divide by C on both sides of the equation. So A divided by C equals B divided by C. And then our last property is the substitution property. So if A equals B, then we can replace A with B in any equation that it shows up in. In our first example, we're going to solve an equation using those algebraic properties. So the equation we're going to solve is 2x minus 5 equals 20 minus 3x. Now when we're solving this equation, when we take each step, we're going to have to provide a valid reason for each step that we take. So in order to show this, we're going to make ourselves a t-chart. On the left hand side of our t-chart is where we're going to write out our equation. And on the right hand side is where we're going to write out all of the reasons for the steps that we take. Now for the first step, we're just going to copy the equation down as it is. So we've got 2x minus 5 equals 20 minus 3x. And our reason there is given because that's the equation as it was given to us. Now, if we're thinking solving this equation, right now we've got x's on both sides of the equation. We need to get those x's on the same side. So I'm going to take this minus 3x, and I'm going to add 3x to both sides of the equation. So for step number two, the equation we end up with is 5x minus 5 equals 20. And the property that we used, we added something to both sides of the equation, so that's the addition property. Now the next thing that we're going to have to do to get this x all by itself is I'm looking at this minus 5. We're going to add 5 to both sides of our equation. So then the equation in step number 3 is going to say 5x equals 25. And again, we added something to both sides of the equation, so the reason is going to be the addition property. Last thing we need to do in order to get x all by itself is get rid of this 5 out in front. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. When we do that, we end up getting x equals 5. And our reason there for number 4 is the division property, since we divide it on both sides. So that's solving an equation using all of those algebraic properties. We're going to need one more algebraic property to help us solve our last example. And that algebraic property is the distributive property. So if we've got a times in parentheses b plus c, then we can distribute that a to both the b and the c. So then we get a times b plus a times c. So the next equation we're going to solve is negative 4 times 11x plus 2 equals 80. And just like we did before, we're going to set up our t-chart with our equation on the left-hand side and our reasons on the right-hand side. Just like we did in the last example, our very first step is going to be to copy the equation down as it's written. And our reason is given, because that's the equation as it was given to us. 
Now the first thing that we're going to have to do is use our distributive property. So we're going to distribute this negative 4 through the parentheses. So in step number 2 we end up with negative 44x minus 8 equals 80. And our reason there is the distributive property. Now if we're solving for x, the next thing that we're going to have to do is add this 8 over to the right hand side. So then we end up with negative 44x equals 88. And our reason there is our addition property since we add it on both sides. Last thing we need to do to get x all by itself is divide by that negative 44. So the answer we get at the end is x equals negative 2. And our reason for that last step was the division property. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.